Okay, everybody, this is day three of the America's Cup here in Auckland. I'm Cameron Dunn. We've got Chris Steele and a special guest here today with Live Sale Dyers, Nathan Outridge from the TV commentary team here in, in Auckland. 1-1 one, one again today, guys. It's out, almost like Groundhog Day. <laughs> you know, these guys are stretching it out really hard. I've been hosting a, a group of people down the road at, one, at the Royal Akarana Yacht Club, and I've never seen so many nervous wrecked looking people supporting Team New Zealand. They're making it hard losing these first races of the day, Chris. That start. Well, absolutely. I think the first race of the day is really, you know, clinical. It, it's, it, it makes a big difference in the, in the overall scheme of things. Momentum, you know, Little Ross has won today and yesterday the first race. And, and from there on, it's kind of like, you know, you want to win the second race, but worst case scenario is you come out sort of 1-1. One, one. So from a momentum standpoint, you know, very much the Kiwis would have been the ones feeling the pressure going, OK, we've got to try and get back on level level terms here because, you know, I feel like this match is going down the, the trend of if you lose two races in a day, that could be the whole event, you know? Yeah, well, you know, momentum, and I, I heard, Nathan, you talking about it on the TV today about we know that, you know, the pressure comes on from the second race, and we know from history, though, that Peter Burling can handle pressure. And he showed it now the last two days. Well, he can definitely handle pressure. You know, he's won in America's Cup. He's won gold medals. Um, he was a great sailor. And sometimes it's like he just needs a little kick. And then all of a sudden he just turns it on. Having said that, though, I don't think he did anything special in that yep. start. You know, yeah, it, you know he, he was on time and the other boat wasn't. He didn't force them to jibe and, and jibe into the dirty air. And the same race before that, he actually made the mistake. He fell off the foil. So I don't see guys winning stars. Yeah. I see people losing them at the moment. Yeah, I think that's a trend. We saw that on the first the first day as well. You know, most of the losses have been from mistakes from the other boat, not necessarily forced yeah, by no. the, the boat in the lead. Yeah, totally. You know, it's, um, it's a one mistake. You lose the race at the moment. The weather's been so stable. We've had these light nor'easters, not really any shifts. Mm. The boats look like they have a lot of bad air coming off them, so you know, trying to attack when you're behind is really hard. I think it's like an interesting point as well. You know, if you look at the way the kind of pre-starts have unfolded, obviously there's been a lot of talk about Jimmy and Bruni being the match racing experts, and Pete, who's definitely no slouch when it comes to match racing, but maybe not as you know forte, so to speak. And you talked about losing starts. I feel like some of the the way that the starts have unfolded in previous races. One boat's done something unconventional, so to speak, whereas that last start, it was kind of like, you know, the Italians picked a reasonable turn back time and the Kiwis, you know, the right move was to sheet on attack and then all of a sudden, you know, the Italians are late, below pin lay, and the start is won and lost, whereas maybe in some of the previous races, you know, they might have done something unconventional and just handed it to the Italians. So I think, for sure, it's sort of going down the road where I think the Kiwis are going to start getting stronger with the match racing side of things. They'll start getting... A little bit more you know tuned in with what's going on but you can be sure that Jimmy's just going to start being more and more aggressive as the series goes on. Yeah I, I, don't, I think it's always about aggression though you know that obviously he didn't mean to you know screw that last one up he, he felt there was a pretty big hole there obviously you know they were they put themselves down on that lay line but just got really soft probably back through the gas where they just come through you know, and then went from there. But what, what's interesting to me, and Nath, I'd be interested to hear your take on this, is, is the geometry of these courses, you know, the narrow and the boundaries. What frustrated me in the first race, watching from, a, I guess, more of the old school match racing view, was, you know, Team New Zealand lost the start. They peel off to the right. Luna Rossa come with them relatively quickly, yet Team New Zealand go all the way to the boundary, so when they meet that first time, they're already hard up against the boundary with nowhere to go. Yeah, the boundaries really make it quite tough, and I think also the upwind starts are, mm. are making it feel even narrower. You know, yeah. I, I look at some of the racing that was in San Fran and Bermuda with the reaching start and the downwind, the race was pretty close all the way to the bottom marks. You could generally get a split at the gate, mm. and then you kind of, the race stays alive for so much yeah. longer. With the upwind start and the big wind shadows, you force someone to tack and then you just pound them up a boundary. Mm. Whereas if you take the boundaries away, maybe you get a bit more time, you get a bit more legs, you can kind of get out nice and wide. But, you know, so I think it's a mixture of the upwind start and the boundaries is really just ending this race really quickly. Yeah, I asked uh, both Jimmy and uh, Joel Scott whether they thought downwind starts possibly are a better option for keeping the racing close in these types of boats as they've sailed like you in the previous cups with that. Do you think that would be possibly a better option moving forward? Well, you know, I wouldn't have been able to answer that question until what we've seen the yeah. last few days. Yeah. But all of a sudden, you know, the high performance boats, you know, you, you don't 
ever cast wind shadow, you know, downwind. Mm. You know, if you're following, you can follow quite tight. Mm. It's not like you're going to affect the boat ahead of you. Maybe you could try and jump them in a jive, but as soon as you go upwind, there's a huge yeah. wind shadow off these boats. And I'm still waiting to see someone try and start on port and really open up the course and, and get it going. You know, I think you probably have to be down a few races to try something like <laughs> that. But, um, you know, I, I think that's how you get the race to, to live a little bit longer yeah. at the course is to start on opposite tacks. I guess looking forward, Chris, um, we've possibly got, you know, the forecast is telling us probably a bit more breeze tomorrow. Let's, I guess, hope for our sake and for everybody watching's sake, maybe they'll use course C. You might get a bit more shifty conditions that, you know, maybe will open things up a bit more. Yeah, potentially. I mean, it'd be great, obviously, from a spectator standpoint, if they use course C, everyone will be able to get up and close and watch the racing. But, I mean, yeah, more breeze, you know, if you go back, a week ago, everyone thought more breeze would suit the Kiwis and maybe a little bit detrimental to the Italians. But so far from what I've seen, it's everything that you thought beforehand was kind of irrelevant. The boats seem very easily, like very evenly matched. Um, it seems like if I had to sort of put my finger on it, maybe the Kiwis are slightly faster in a straight line. But as soon as they're behind and they're being dictated to and they don't have the ability to sail their own modes, it seems like they really struggle to find a passing lane. Vice versa, when they're in front, if you look at all the races they've just extended and, and if you look at the deltas between the races they've won and lost, you know, it's been 1-1 one, one each day. The Kiwis have always won the second race by more of a margin than, than the first that they lost. So, I mean, maybe there's a little bit in that to say that their boat might be slightly better, but I think it all comes back to the way the boat's designed to be sailed. And if you can sail it the way it's designed to be sailed, it's obviously beneficial, but maybe the Italians have a little bit more versatility and they can sail the boat in different modes and, and then make a race out of situations that might be a little bit more difficult. Yeah, so looking forward to tomorrow. Am I going to get any uh, picks from either of you guys for, for tomorrow's? Yeah. <laughs> One. I mean, bit, right? honestly, I thought the conditions today, it's sort of getting to that point where it's like the, the Italians were very strong in the first race today and it looked like it was kind of theirs to take advantage of, you know, port entry again. You sort of look at it like a tennis match and you're like, you're on serve. They broke the Kiwis in the first race and the Kiwis answered straight back. So, I mean, yeah, 1-1's One a, a safe bet for sure. I'm just really interested to see how the boats perform in a bit more breeze and as long as we get some good racing I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be excited to see it. Well I think as we've said here in the last few days for the sports fans for the yachting it's just phenomenally set up for this next few days you know it's a best to win four series from here on in. Well it's like, it's like Nave said earlier you know how how many America's Cups have you looked back and and not known who's going to win after three days of sailing you know that's that's incredibly close. Normally you get a pretty good idea early on as one boat's faster and the other one's not, but it's it's anyone's game at the moment. And and maybe something like gear failure might come into you know the, the question later on. If, well, if let's, someone let's has a mistake not. then <laughs> now yeah. you've said it. <laughs> yeah. Let's hope if that happens, Chris Steele. Yeah. All right everybody, well thank you very much for tuning in again here and thanks to all our sponsors and supporters for letting this happen here at in Auckland for Live Side Eye and we'll catch you all tomorrow for another tight day of America's Cup racing. Cheers.